Hello YouTube, main man Sui here, hoping everyone is doing great as always and welcome to a season 4 tier list video. It's gonna be real interesting considering, you know, we don't have a lot of meta to go on. We have had no tournaments obviously due to COVID, so when we don't have international players going at it, you know, one region against another, mm, we can't really tell 100%. We can never tell 100%, this game is too complicated, but um, that's going to be a little bit of a, you know, problem trying to figure out the meta. But for fun, we're gonna do an attempt today because it's been exactly one year, one year anniversary since I posted my season three tier list which was three hours long, believe it or not. Oh, how beautiful pacing on that one. Um, so I just want to stress that this is highly subjective. This is my opinion alone. And I'm no Arslan Ash. I'm no Ni. I'm just a big old scrub. So this is from my point of view. So keep that in mind. Uh, and again, remember there, there has been no tournaments and uh, remember also that tier lists apply to very few people. This is, uh, make no mistake, this is the most balanced Tekken has ever been. Uh, Tekken 7 uh, Season 4. Tekken has never been this balanced. So, uh, tier lists are very obsolete at this point, and they only apply if you're basically playing in like the top 100 of EVO. You can start discussing how, you know, the tier list is affecting you, uh, in my opinion. Because today, uh, I will be placing uh, Eddie Gordo here. He will be at the very bottom. I would say he's arguably the worst character in the game right now. But you can probably think of many Eddie players who blow you up. And you're like, well, he's supposed to be super weak. And it's like, it's a very balanced game. And the only time Eddie is really weak is, you know, Evo, top eight. Yonding might think once or twice before committing to Eddie. Uh, right, and I also want to stress that this one's going to be way faster than three hours. I can't do that again. I lost my voice when I did that. So, if you'd like to hear a couple of sentences regarding the identity of every character, how they play in general, what makes them tick, I would go and revisit the season three video. Although in terms of balancing and my opinion, it's a little bit outdated, but I have good information on all of the characters, like how they play. So I'm going to link that below uh, in the description of the video. And if when you do click that link and go to the season three video, there are timestamps in the comment section. So you can actually click to any character of interest. Uh, so keep that in mind. I will be very brief today. I will just do an outline of how, how I feel the, the balancing looks like right now. And the last thing I will say before I start is that I will be doing this in popularity order. So I will start with the most popular characters according to the usage data and the last characters we will look at are the least popular characters. So I hope that makes sense. So uh, we're gonna start out with Mr. Phoenix, Paul, who is just consistently the most popular character and he absolutely, without doubt, is in the top 10. He is unbelievably strong and all round. And in season four, he got some nerfs, but it was mostly a tiny slap on the, I don't even wanna call it a slap on the wrist. It was a slap on the little finger, the pinky there. Ah, ah. Uh, that's what it was. There are no significant changes. He's an absolute monster. Okay, and then we have my main, Kazuya Mishima, who in my opinion is in the top 20. He received the Fujin Uraken, which is one of the best new moves in Season 4, and it certainly goes along well with his identity. No longer have to commit to an ultra punishable while stunning too to clip people who try to step you. Fujin Raken is great for that, but he still remains Kazuya. He still has weak poking. And weak poking in Tekken 7, but a game that is a lot about close quarters combat, it's problematic, but make no mistake, in, in strong hands, Kazuya is uh, one hell of a force to be reckoned with, and he is in the top 20. And the next character we're going to look at is Brian Fury, who is also in the top 20. He's received a lot of significant buffs, especially his hatchet, hatchet kick. Just keep, keeps getting buffed over and over, down for 2-1, plus 8 now. 
he got a lot of great buffs. But I don't think it's enough to have him crack the top 10, in my opinion. There are just other characters that are more disgusting. Um, but Brian is very strong, uh, and again, in capable hands, he, you know, he absolutely, he absolutely shines. Uh, and the next character is Armor King. Uh, and Armor King is actually a mid-tier now, in my opinion. Most people, including me, would put, usually put him in low tier. But he's gotten a lot of buffs. Like, that list was very long. And again, it was nothing that suddenly, you know, erased all of his weak points. Like, suddenly he can build momentum very well on plus frames or... Uh, you know, he's always had some tracking problems, but I, I, I do believe he got enough quality buffs to warrant that he goes uh, towards mid-tier, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and then we have Leroy. And Leroy and uh, Fakum Ram, I want to mention, are no longer like overpowered characters. That's not... I, I believe no one is overpowered anymore. I should have stressed this at the start. Like, I'm very happy with the balancing right now. Leroy and Fakum Ram are joke characters in that they are in the top 10 and you need one... exactly one brain cell to play them. They play themselves and they are winning machines. It's... Uh, they, they are a joke in that regard, but they are, they are no longer overpowered. But Leroy takes nerfs yet again with Season 4. Uh, most notably, less damage on Hell Sweep. Orbital was nerfed. Down 2 was nerfed yet again. Uh, but they buffed the Hermit. And Hermit remains super strong. And Leroy remains super strong. So he's in the top 10. Uh, and then we're going to look at Dragonov. And Dragonov, to me, is a solid character. But a bit like uh, Jack. Uh, they dominated season one, and then they've been uh, they they've been hit by a few nerfs, and then they've just fallen behind because everyone else is buffed. And Dragonov's Wild Running Two has been suffering a lot, and uh, he has just not received anything of quality. His new move in season four. Oh, he got a mid homing move finally, but it's it's a not a very good move. Twenty two frames fast. Uh, Dragonov remains mid tier in my opinion, or is mid tier. Um, and then we have Jin, and Jin is interesting. Uh, in my opinion, uh, he's not top 10 anymore, he's top 20. Still a very strong character, very hard to play, uh, but they keep nerfing key tools. Uh, most notably here was uh, Ford Ford 4 <laughs> re removed the plus frames, it's now neutral on block. Um, and uh, Standing 4 got nerfed. He got a, a couple of like nerfs to key tools. Um, but they buffed his poking and it's that's where they want Jin to be. That's where the design team are saying like, okay, we overdid it with Standing 4 and all of that. And down back 4, back then. Uh, let's go back to more poking oriented with Jin. Uh, still a very solid character, but I don't believe he's top 10 anymore. Uh, and then we have, um, God, where is he? I'm trying to find uh, Fakum Ram. Uh... Oh, there we go. There is Fakum Ram. Uh, Fakum Ram is easily still top five, in my opinion. They, they did nerf the sidestep a lot. They said they nerfed the backdash, but it still seems very strong to me. And it's a bit like Leroy, super all around. Super, can do anything. Great damage, combos, uh, punishment, um, and of course he has a wall break. Uh, you know, like, Ryan does a taunt on, on the wall. Requires skill. Fucking Ram just does back two and holds one, and then you, d you blow up and die. Um, and he's standing free and down forward one into five different types of mix-ups remain a joke. Uh, so, just like Leroy, a winning machine with very little effort, very strong. And then we have some, in my opinion, some of the most questionable uh, buffing in, um, in Season 4, and that is what happened to Devil Jin. Up forward 4 yet again, giving you a back 4. 
uh, two Hell Sweep variations now. You have a Hell Sweep from Tekken 6 and Tag 2. So when you're at the wall, you just you don't even trip them. You just do bam, lap, lap into plus four, and they remain standing in a crouch. Down back two, counter hits into back four, or rage art if, if you have rage. Uh, he did not need this at all, and he still has this super buffed electric. So uh, he, make no mistake, he's top 10. Uh, yeah, he's super strong. Uh, and then we have King, and King, in my opinion, uh, he gets buffed every season. Uh, very strong character. He's not top 10, he's top 20. He does have some holes, you know, uh, very apparent holes in his gameplay. Uh, and then we have, uh, where is he? Hoarang. Uh, and Hoarang is one of those characters where also when you look at all of his buffs and some of his, you know, super crazy attacks in certain stances, you're inclined to think that he's really strong. You know, look at those frames, look at the pressure he has now. But he's still quite flawed in the neutral, and uh, he requires so much out of a player, you know, utilizing him. And so much is situational, locked behind st stances. Um, uh, definitely good, better than he's ever been, I think. Um, but uh, I, I would put him at mid, in my opinion. Uh, and then we have Heihachi, who also keeps getting... Um, Quality buffs, especially back four, his mid counter hit now giving a combo is great. Uh, I love the buff to his uh, health sweep. They, they buffed his lows, you know, down back two. Uh, but again, that's seeable in high level. This is for high level. Uh, down back two is quite useless in high level play. Uh, the buff to health sweep was nice. You know, you do health sweep tsunami, and the second hit of tsunami is minus 14 on block, used to be minus 16, not launch punishable anymore by the majority of a cast. Um, but he's still kind of, and forward four, you know, keeps them in his face, sucks them in on block. But he still remains Heihachi. He still has uber problems with lows. Uh, you know, has a lot of great stuff, but uh, he's too flawed. Um, uh, and then we have Kazumi, who remains a very strong fundamental oriented character, great movement, pokes. They nerfed uh, Magic 4, the damage, they nerfed Dombak 4, remove the counter hit effect. Only plus 4 now on, on counter hit, just like a normal hit. Uh, but the while running 1 new move is kind of interesting, even though it makes it harder for you guys to dash into jab. Um, but she still remains very solid, in my opinion. Uh, and then we have... We have Law. Uh, still remains very strong in very capable hands. You need insane execution to get the maximum out of him. Basically, your ninja killer or Hisham or double um, or classic Malgu, but, uh, or Lohai as a great law. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of these characters that on paper looks perfect. You're almost inclined to put him in top 10, but due to the execution problems, I would say top 20, and the fact that the top 10 right now is, you know, kind of crazy. Uh, and then we have uh, Negan, and Negan is a very solid mid-tier. He's got some nice buffs yet again. Uh, I love that 1-2 Intimidation, even better frames, but that's such a key thing for him to easily transition into Intimidation. And Intimidation down to, uh, my god, the damage that does now, it's incredible. Uh, but still, he's pretty clunky, he's pretty punishable. Um, he doesn't have a lot of like godlike moves, you can just keep spamming. But solid, great mix up uh, utility. Uh, very solid character and fun to play. Easy, easy, which is a great thing. Uh, and then we have Claudio, and this one is controversial because this is someone you might be able to squeeze into top 20. Uh, he has a lot of very strong tools like uh, uh, space control, good frames on a lot of stuff, Wish pu whiff punish is excellent, um, you know, sidestep 4 is great, back 1. You know, some of his moves are just beyond anything, but still some trouble in, in the poking department. Uh, yeah, I, I would I would put him at mid tier, my opinion. And then we are at Mr. Steve, 
And Steve is a character where you could argue every single season of Tekken 7, you could say he's the best character and no one should raise their eyebrows. It's like, it's perfectly fine to argue that. Uh, he has a very unique design. He plays like no one else and he just fits Tekken 7. He's always fit Tekken well, you know, so safe. And he stands to gain everything with his counter hits and he stands to lose nothing. He never puts himself at risk. He just chips at you with poking, pressure, has mix-ups, or he just waits for you. And with great timing, you know, clips you in the chin and goodbye. Uh, and he just remains uh, an enormously strong character, but uh, more difficult to play than ever. Now that he has the Shiro combo from downward to counter it, uh, but yeah, he's, he's super good. He's, su he, he's top five, in my opinion. Uh, and then we are at uh, Josie. And this is a character where I feel uh, the new attack, uh, her own war drums, not as good as Julia's, but interesting. And then I know Switch 1 was buffed. Better frames, right? Um, and she has seen some quality stuff over the seasons. But I don't see why I should, should put that character anywhere outside of mid-tier, in my opinion. Uh, and now we are at Lars, uh, one of my favorite characters to talk about. And famously, he was, uh, by the end of season 3, he was, in my opinion, the worst character. It was him or Eddie. Uh, but now he's fought his way up to mid-tier. Uh, counter it back 4, so some, saw a nice damage buff. He has many new counter it launchers, which are great. Uh, his, uh, is it dynamic entry 2 below was buffed. It's now minus 12, right? Uh, really good. And he has the absolute best combos in the game. He had good combos in all the other seasons, but right now he can wall travel like no character has ever been able to wall travel in this game. And he does a shitload of damage, and his new Rage Drive is actually pretty damn decent. Uh, so Lars is a mid-tier, uh, instead of a low-tier. Uh, and then we have Noctis, who's a very solid character, but has nothing crazy about him in my opinion. Uh, his range, obviously. Uh, uh, his range is great, his down for two, amazing, but if someone knows how to play against Noctis, it's like, uh, he's a great anti-Akuma, obviously. Uh, can always hit, swat Akuma out of the air with his standing two. Uh, but there's nothing remarkable or uber crazy about Noctis. And th this might seem weird to hear because he's one of the absolute best beginner and intermediate slayers in the game. But as soon as you reach a higher level, you'll see, you'll see that he, he commits too much to, uh, uh, to risky play and he has no really crazy attacks. And Downback 2, as annoying as it is online, it's perfectly seeable at 25 frames offline. It's, it's basically asking to be killed. Uh, so, uh, mid-tier. Uh, and then we have Shaheen, and th this is another a little bit controversial placing, I think. Uh, God, where is Shaheen? Um, I'm actually going to put him at mid-tier. I'm not going to put him at 10 or 20. And this is, again, due to I feel the other characters just having uh, crazier stuff. Uh, but it's also a lack of just seeing him in action. Uh, but again, uh, Ao from uh, the Philippines, right? He's not from Thailand, he's from the Philippines. Uh, plays a really mean Shaheen, uh, and Shaheen has, uh, he has some great stuff. He has a really good neutral with punish, his down for two is excellent, he has a 50-50 with the slide and an orbital. Um, he has great tools, but, you know, th this is a character you could put here, but I believe by the end of this, I believe the characters you will see here will have a slight edge on him, but it's very, very, very close. Uh, and this is also a bit controversial. We have Miguel, and I'm putting him in mid-tier. He used to be low-tier, in my opinion, uh, but he's got some really good buffs in Season 4. 
uh, especially that new move, the 12 frame Punisher is, uh, is, is insane. And they buffed so many options from uh, Savage, making him safer, buffing his punishment. Uh, and this is a character I think a lot of people, Miguel Mains, will be inclined to say, oh, he's definitely here. But I still believe the characters you will see here will be, will be stronger, in my opinion. Uh, and then Asuka. And here we have yet again a character you, you could put here, but I'm gonna put her here. And same explanation, I just think these characters shine more than Asuka. But Asuka is super easy to play and has some of the craziest moves in the game. Uh, she's very, very solid mid tier. And here we have our first character I'm gonna put in low tier. And it's actually gonna be two characters in a row. So now I'm going to have to find Katarina and I have to find Lily. And Katarina, great online. Again, probably the easiest character to pick up and play and win with. But as soon as you go into high level or like, God forbid, competitive play, it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's again this reverse I usually talk about. It's like, uh, when you play in beginner and intermediate with Katarina, the character wins those matches and not you. She, you do not require a lot of skill to win with her in beginner and in, in intermediate. But then that completely uh, flips onto its head, it's reversed. When, when you're in like high level play or competitive play, it's you, it's all up to you. The character is not going to carry you in the least. You have to carry the character, basically. Uh, so yeah, but very risky, uh, not a lot of good tools. Lily, kind of the same, has a couple of nice tools like down free, down forward, down forward free. Um, uh, God, I even forget, like how often do you see Lily? I like her homing move, core circle forward free four. Uh, has a lot of good tools, but most noteworthy with Lily is that she has some of the best movement in the game. So characters that are very vulnerable to sidesteps can get, you know, squished by Lily. It was for a reason Ni used to pick Lily to counter Kudan's Devil Jin in like season one, early season two. Um, but uh, the character is very flawed and very infamous for, for her very weak down forward one. And it's, it's those sort of tools that really have to, you know, be good in this game because Downford 1s overall are pretty crazy in Tekken 7, but certain characters have like the super good Downford 1s. And it makes all, all of a difference. Um, so I would, I would also trust Lily Mains to know what we're talking about when they say that she does not shine. Uh, we are at 23 minutes. It's going pretty well. Um, and then we have Alyssa, who is top 20. Um, very, very good character for many reasons. Great movement, great space control, great poking, great punishment, mix-up ability, can stress the opponent like crazy, great rage drive. Um, lacks a bit in damage, and uh, now you have 175 health points, but still, still a super good character. <clears throat> and then you have Jack. Like Dragunov, he's fallen behind. He feels like an old, old Tekken character in Tekken 7. Everyone else has crazy wall travel and combos, and Jack, you see his wall travel, and you're like, what? And with, and, and great in a fundamental player's hands, but, you know, crumbles under pressure, does not have the craziest tools. He's, he's too honest in a game where you have too many characters with non-dishonest uh, attacks, uh, is what it feels like. Uh, Feng Wei has been buffed, seen some cool stuff in, uh, in season four, but still remains, you know, a character that has a thousand good moves, but lacks great moves. Uh, and then we have Lee, who's a character that for a long time was uh, very underrated and uh, very underrated by me as well. I actually watched my season three tier list and I put him in mid tier, very low, I think. Uh, and he is, uh, he's way better than that. He's way better than that. Uh, he, he has some of the best keep out in the game. He has some of the best counter tools. He has a great down forward one. He has a down forward two. His magic four is super good. He has a 50-50 with the slide and while stunning two mix-ups. 
Uh, he has great damage, he has great wall travel, his combos are great. Uh, he's, he's super good. <laughs> he's really good. But he requires a shitload from the, from the user. And this is not exclusive to him. You have these bad boys here as well. Um, difficulty. Difficulty. Uh, God, where are we? Uh, uh, now we are at Marduk, and I'm actually going to put Marduk in the top 10. I did not do that in my season 3 tier list. I, I put him right below, uh, but Marduk is a monster, and he's the most flawed character you will see in my top 10, but he makes up for it for his bulldozer ability. If he gets momentum on you, uh, yeah, Madre de Dios de Padre. Uh, make your buttocks ready. Separate those cheeks. Let him slip in easily. You don't want it rough, you know. Just help him out a bit because uh, uh, that character, if he gets momentum, good God almighty. It's like, certainly if he's pressured, he's kind of weak, but... And where everyone else in that top row, except Devil Jin, everyone saw slight nerfs. For some reason, they buffed Marduk. And they gave him upward one too, which is, it is it's his new move, a 12 frame punish that he can do from crouching. So if you do down back four, minus 12, he can, he can actually do his 12 frame to punish you. And put you in like minus five full crouch. Ugh! And the, the move alone does like 30 plus, like 34 or something. And it hits from the reach. It's like 2.7 the distance. The reach. It's, yeah, he's top 10 in my opinion. He, he is. Uh, and then we have Lucky Chloe, who just fails to shine. Uh, feels very gimmicky. Uh, bad against, very bad against people who know the matchup. Uh, and then Julia, uh, top five. Just uh, one of those characters that I think the devil, the community whined too late about Julia. If if people had actually whined properly. Uh, Early on in the production of season four, she would have received way more nerfs. Uh, she sh she got a few nerfs, but she should have been nerfed more. Uh, she has some of the craziest neutral in the game, mix-ups, combos, etc. Moves that are flat out broken, like her uh, party crasher uh, and Ford Ford One Plus Two. Eh? The character is uh, absolutely batshit crazy. She's top five. Uh, and then we have Leo. Uh, Leo is very unremarkable, uh, solid, mid-tier. Uh, and then we have Geese, uh, who's no longer... I, think, I feel he was busted in Season 3. The Moon Slicer should have never been the way it was. And then they, they changed the Moon Slicer, and thankfully it is the way it always should have been. The, the first hit of it puts them in a floated state and... By that, he can't do as many hits, and it scales the damage more. Thank God. And Sight uh, 3 was nerfed. It's no longer plus six, uh, but he, he still remains super strong and is in the top five, in my opinion. And then we have Gigas, and this is also a character I, I failed to give him enough credit in season three. I saw him as the worst character, and eventually I would say that Lars is worse, because Lars was worse and Eddie. Uh, so he was underrated, but he was low tier in, in season three, I would say. Uh, but in season four, he's, he's a solid mid tier, in my opinion. Uh, uh, just the combo buff is really nice. His one to punish is, I would say, ridiculous. It didn't even need uh, buff damage, but, but they buffed the damage and now it's what, like 35? 10 frames! Infinite range. Anything you can punish with that. It's not even bad to use that on something that's launch punishable. 1-2 is like never bad. And it wall splats, knocks, knocks them down, set up some pressure. Um, and then they, you know, the combo buff is really, you can finally combo. Uh, and then the back 1 plus 2 buff, down forward 4, uh, 1 plus 2, he has a low now from... Uh, uh, Golem, you know, that's neutral on, on, on the hit. Um, uh, Goliath got a buff. Uh, yeah, uh, the one option got a buff. Uh, and his throws have more reach now, right? Uh, 
yeah, I I think Gigas is a solid character now. Uh, he, he is. Uh, God, where are we? Uh, Yoshimitsu, where are we? 29 minutes. Uh, Yoshimitsu is a character you could put in mid, but I feel like he's, he's gimmicky and in high level of play. You know, people are gonna know most um, most used float charts and all of that. And it puts himself at great risk all the time. So I, I feel it's fair to put him in low. Um, but you, you could put him in mid. But it's like for him to be here, the player has to be a genius, basically. It's, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at I'm Musician, basically. Uh, and then Bob. And this one is also going to be controversial. Uh, people, some people want to put him in top 10, but I'm going to put him in top 20 because it sounds so crazy that he now has a 15 frame launcher and his CD1 is so crazy. Why would you give this to a character that's so all around? But the thing is, you're thinking of Tekken 6 Bob. You, st you still have that in your head, the legacy of Tekken 6 Bob. And you're like, oh, what happens when you give that character a 15 frame launcher? But the problem is, it's not Tekken 6 anymore. We are now in Tekken 7, and all of those fucks up here, it's like, they do things that were unheard of in Tekken 6. It was not on the radar, even. So I'm actually gonna put, put Bob in top 20, even though he has those crazy buffs. I feel like these characters are stronger in the end. Um, let's see, Bob. And, and then Ling, a character I would put here before, but I will now put in top 20. Because her new move, that low, is it down back two, is ridiculous. That move is ridiculous. And then the, the mix-ups and mind games she gets after that, uh, it's, it's a joke to be honest. And e even before, very underrated character, um, she's very strong. Um, and then Andy, uh, in my opinion, now g gets to be called the worst character in the game. But I do just want to state again that uh, being the worst character in the most balanced Tekken game ever is not that much of a problem. I like to play Kazuya, who's very strong these days. And uh, I remember just a few months ago getting completely obliterated by a very strong Eddie from Norway. And Kazuya is really good versus Eddie, and I have good Eddie knowledge. But it just blew me up. It's like, it's down to the player in this game. Again, this applies if you're going to EVO, top 100. Uh, so, Eddie, super unsafe, takes huge risks all the time, quite gimmicky, just doesn't have good, very good neutral, finally has a wall combo. Um, but yeah, it's like... Why would you play Eddie in a tournament unless you're like a die-hard character enthusiast? Which, don't get me wrong, I I love that more than anything else. You know, uh, I JCR plays Armor King no matter what. Uh, well, okay, they switch these days, but I like those days, you know, and when Yon Ding played Eddie. Um, but uh, Eddie on paper is just not good. And practically in play, he's not very good. You have to carry Eddie really hard. Um, all of these guys have to be carried, basically, by very, very strong players. Uh, Nina, solid mid-tier. I'm not gonna say much more than that. Has seen some quality buffs. Lei, a character that definitely has seen great buffs. His new attack is crazy. His, uh, from Snake Stance, he ha now has a Horang down 3-4 or a Leroy Dime Free 2, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's, my god, is it good. Uh, it's super, super good. Uh, and Lei, underrated character. Uh, Lei players like to downplay him, but he is very solid. He's very solid. And now we are finally at Akuma. And I want to stress again, like those of you who hate 2D, I'm going to post a video soon talking about it. It's like, Akuma, is bottom eight characters in terms of character usage. So I just want to stress again, like, how often do you see him and his win-loss data, data uh, online? He's in the bottom half of a roster, so it's not like he's doing particularly well. Uh, but we like to shit on 2D. Um, but uh, Akuma is in the top 10, and I he, he's seen his damage nerfed, 
<laughs> he got the EX Tatsu, you know, for an easier combo. But the problem with that is that you, you're launch punishable if, you know, if they guess right. Whereas if you do the old sequence, you can get a plus seven if you have the execution. But the old death combo sequence has reduced damage. Uh, and again, you couple that with the old nerf to Ford Ford 4, you know, no counter at launch. And you're looking at a character where I wonder if it's actually worth all of the effort anymore to play him, when there are so many other crazy characters right now. Uh, Akuma is super strong. If you're a god with execution, you could argue he's number one. But the problem is, like, is it worth all of the effort? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, su super good on paper, but super hard to use. And the damage nerfs don't, don't help him, obviously. And, and then we have Raven, which some people might say is here, but uh, I don't find her to be especially remarkable. Just a strong, solid character, but n none of these like uh, super crazy tools uh, that really stick out. Uh, but uh, her new move I hear is really good. The all-consuming black hole. I wonder if that's a troll bat name. Uh, 114, right? Uh, but, but I hear it's good. Did it up her wall damage as well? Um, and then we have Anna, who has seen some crazy buffs. Uh, also, like ruining identity of characters, yeah, let's make her down for 215 frames. Let's make her down for 215 frames. Um, good, cra craziest, crazy 50 50 vortex, insane mix up, but remains very risky. Uh, and then we have Kuma Panda. Didn't see any great changes, uh, remain pretty weak ish. Uh, and then Eliza. Uh, would have been here if it wasn't for her uh, a huge nerf. Uh, her down down one, her crouch jab. Uh, so she got what Geese got. That on on counter hit now, her her down one crouching jab has the same properties as a normal hit, a normal hit down one. It used to guarantee like uh, you know dive kick. It used to give like crazy frames. Uh, and that being removed, uh, let's just say it hurts her pressure and her crazy 2D ability. Um, so, yeah, uh, she still remains crazy, you know, her wall pressure insane. She, she does, still has a lot of great stuff. But, uh, yeah, that crouch jab alone, like, uh, yeah, that's, that, that was literally the best tool she had almost. Um, and then we have Zafina, and Zafina completes our top 10, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes! Uh, Zafina has the best movement. She saw some damage nerfs, but she still remains pretty much unchanged. Uh, she has the best movement in the game. She has Tekken 5 movement in Tekken 7. That alone is going to do quite a bit. And then she has a shitload of great moves, and she has a lot of evasion. And certain characters she just absolutely obliterates, like uh, Dragonov. Oh, your your mids hit very high. Goodbye, you can't touch me. Can touch me. Dan, 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 dan. Dan, dan. Can touch me. Dan. Or uh, Steve. Oh, he's down for one, back one. Oh, you want to hit a down for two? Oh, here's Zafina. Down three, back one plus two, back one. It's like she kills certain characters and uh, just very strong. And still good damage, even though she got damage nerfs. Zafin is, is super good. And the f Oh god, no, we're not done. Uh, Ganryu. Uh, Ganryu we're going to put in mid-tier. Um, <laughs> you know, he has a lot of great and super cheap stuff. He dominates online. He, he's like, is he top two, I think? It's like... He's one of the least popular characters. He's literally at the bottom of character picks. He's at the very bottom, but he's at the top of win-loss uh, ratio. And this is because when, when you're quite gimmicky, no one ever plays against you. Everyone fights you blind, 
and then you have some of the trickiest and gimmickiest and cheapest stuff in the game. So he completely stomps online, but in tournaments he lacks reach. And he's not a very uh, uh, complete character. Um, he just lacks, lacks reach. And then Kunimitsu I'm gonna put as the final character here in, uh, in mid. Um, very, uh, you know, tricky mix-up based character that we've seen many times. Uh, has some decent pokes and utility. Um, but this is where I trust more like, um, uh, very strong players I've heard talk about her because I haven't spent a lot of time with her. Um, but she, she just doesn't seem, uh, like a character that's going to end up here. It seems like a character that, you know, as soon as you figure out the, the, the matchup, she, she struggles a lot. Uh, but that has some, she has pretty good movement though, doesn't she? And some decent pokes. Her jab or like her 1-2, uh, it's pretty decent I think, her 1-2. Doesn't that track a little bit? Uh, can you put the top 20 or at least the top 10 in order? Uh, it's, that's very hard to do. Uh, because the, the differences are so small uh, between the characters and it's absolutely more down to the player. But I guess if I were to make a top five, in my opinion, that would be maybe Steve, Keys, Julia, Fakum Ram is easily in the top five. And then it would most likely be Devil Jin. Uh, so, but this would be a top five, in my opinion, and then they would be followed by these characters. Uh, but that's, that's my opinion. And top 20, Kazia would not be there. Uh, you'd, you'd see Brian higher, you would see Law higher, you would see Alisa higher, Bob would be higher, Jin, Kazumi Lee, oh, she, she would... Maybe something like that? Or maybe Brian... <sighs> maybe here? I don't know, uh, but something like that I would do. Uh, and mid, it's like, yeah, Armor King would not be there. Um, Dragon Knob... Claudio would be higher, Lars would be lower. Jack would probably be higher, Asuka, Miguel. Maybe down there higher. And then Eddie, last place. Maybe Yoshi, there. Yeah, uh, if I just scramble uh, a, a little quickly I think I, I would it would probably do so something like this uh, right so that that would be my tier list for season four and yet again it's very subjective this is my opinion only there are no t real tournaments to judge by you only have online events and that's not the same thing and when you do online events due to the crap netcode, you only play in one region. Like in Northern Europe or Southern Europe or here's a Pakistan tournament, here's a Korea tournament. Uh, we need international events to see all of the top players go, go at it. Um, but judging by everything I've seen in the patch notes, uh, me playing, me looking at other strong players play and their thoughts on the game, this is in my opinion what, what it looks like. Uh, and Marduk is obviously there. And Akuma there. Yes, okay, so I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that is my tier list. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk. Uh, and again, you can check the season three tier list if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about every uh, character, you know, specifically how they operate. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very happy with this. So have a nice day, everyone on YouTube. Take care.